I want to start with this question. How many of you genuinely have some worries running in your mind right now? I see a hand right there. Some genuine worries, okay? Some are worried about how many more minutes I have for the parking to get over so that I can renew my parking. Many thoughts, many worries, correct? We all have thoughts and worries. Think about this for a moment. When you tell a little child not to do something, in our homes, we, we bring up children and we tell them, don't do this. Don't, don't bring food next to your computer. This is the, in the last two years, you must be, you'll be able to relate what I'm saying, right? Don't bring food next to your computer because the desktop is now fully with crumbs. But the child does exactly the same the next day after you spoke, you cleaned the place, but the child does the same thing. How do you feel? How do we feel? So from God's perspective, when he says, I am with you in the fire. I am with you through the waters. I'm holding back the waters for you. And when God says in his word, do not worry because by worrying, you will not be able to even add a single hour to your day. But we still keep worrying and worrying and worrying and this worry is only doing more harm to us and it's not doing any good to us hallelujah so i want to start with this assurance that i want all of you to turn your bibles to a very common a very famous commonly quoted scripture is is matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 33 can we all read matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 33 and and it starts with therefore i tell you do not worry about your life can we all read this together? Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Turn to the person seated next to you and tell them, don't worry. Don't worry. If you know the person real well, give them a nudge and say, stop worrying. Because it's not my words. This is the words of the true living God. Hallelujah. Can we all be rest assured that God is in control of our lives and don't worry. Don't worry. What is troubling your mind right now? Oh, that approval is still not come and I'm waiting on it for a long time. Don't worry. Don't worry. Health, I'm still sick. Seven, six, seven weeks still coughing. Don't worry. The healing is coming. So I want to start with this assurance to the church this morning, to the community this morning. God wants us to master the art of not to worry, but cast all your cares upon him. Let's read that portion of scripture once again. Matthew chapter 6, 25 to 33. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Can we all read it together? It'll be nice to read together the word of God this morning. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow nor reap nor store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you following with me church okay let's read it together yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they hallelujah how much more assurance we need this morning are you not much more valuable than they can any one of you <clears throat> by worrying add a single hour to your life and why do you Worry about clothes. See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed this way. He's referring to who? Solomon. Solomon the great. The guy who, who built the temple. The guy who knew what to live a royal life. Live life king size. We can take it from him. And he says, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was clothed like the lilies of the valleys. They do not, and, 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 he go on to, and he goes on to say, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you will need them. Hallelujah. And the final verse he says, 
but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness so the assurance is very much for us church this morning that we are not called to worry and god says even solomon did not clothe himself like this when i can feed the birds in the air when i can take care of the lilies in the valleys how much more you are valuable man values people based on their status based on how they look based on what they wear based on their skin color based on their education based on their social status but god has a different way of valuing us hallelujah so if there's anything that you have to take back home this morning take back with this assurance go back with this assurance that you and i are not called to worry but god is in control and but he says this but seek first the kingdom can we all read this together but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well so that's the assurance that i want to start this morning's sermon with i also want to talk about assumption you know one of the most nice parable that jesus talks about assumption you know which one staying on with matthew matthew chapter 25 14 to 30 it may not be on the screen matthew chapter 25 14 to 30 i want you to make a note so that you can go back home and and read it's a classic past parable to understand assumptions have you have you read through that parable i can give you some hints bags of gold three servants okay it's a classic parable and the parable helps us understand what assumption will look like assurance we started don't worry god is in control but seek first the kingdom of god assumption when you look about talk about assumption matthew 25 14 to 30 it's about these three servants so this master is now getting ready on a long journey look even more clarifies it saying that this master is going for which purpose when you read the same parable in the in the gospel of luke so this master goes on this long journey and he calls three of his servants to one he gives five bags of gold to another he gives two and to another he gives one <clears throat> to cut the long story short he's coming back again and he's asking for an account and and the guy who took the five bags gives him back another five so he, he doubles it the guy who took the two bags he is giving uh, him another two bags but the third servant he did not get the point at all and what did he do he basically assumed assumption can we say this word assumption he basically assumed oh i know about you master you are a tough guy you are a tough task master so all i did is i took that one bag i hid it somewhere now take i'm giving it back to you he assumed and what we can also read is the servant who was given the least was least faithful the servant who was given the least was least faithful so let's not let's not be in a situation where all the time the talent the treasure that god has given us let's not be in that situation where we assume certain things that what we are doing is right and when god asks us for an account we cut a sorry figure like the servant are you with me church this morning assurances god is with us don't worry but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things your food your clothing your water your shelter will be taken care assumption let's not be that one like that one servant where he assumed thinking that he is doing the right thing and cut a sorry figure because the 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 servant to whom the least was given he was least faithful and i also want to talk about actuality actuality is basically i was looking for another word and which starts in a it's basically reality actuality and reality are the same <clears throat> the actuality is this i'm talking about assurance i'm talking about assumptions and i'm talking about the actuality the actuality is this after life this is the actuality what is actuality the actuality is this ecclesiastes chapter 12 was 7 and 8 and the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to god who gave it meaningless meaningless says the teacher everything is 
meaningless. Can we all say this together? Meaningless. Everything is meaningless. This couple of days back, I was talking to one of our uncles, Ravina's maternal uncle. So he's close to the family and uh, every now and then he calls. And this time I happened to pick up the call. He's, he's, he's crossed the retirement phase. Now he's basically calling people to, to just, uh, you have some uncles, aunts like that. Hey, what's happening in life? And that's all. Next 25 minutes is gone. Right? A nice man. Very nice man. He's one of the guys, one of the uncles who actually, when I told, when we told him that I quit my job and I'm going to serve the church full time, so he had the guts or the audacity to tell me on my face that I've never come across a most irresponsible husband like you. That was 10 years back. But today he calls every now and then. He opens up to us. He really values us. He really... He's, he's like, he, he knows that, okay, I think these guys are taken care by God and, 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 and he respects us. So he, I was talking to him, so he was, he basically started his career in ISRO. ISRO is, uh, what is that, ISRO, Indian Space Research, whatever, yeah. So he started his life there and then he quit that work and then he started his own business into powder coating and painting and paint booth and all that. 30 plus years, been there, done that, retired now, one daughter, settled abroad. Life is great. So, so he's, he's, he's buying a new car and he was talking about this new car. I was giving him some tips and he was talking about that advantage, all that. But end of it, you know what, before we could end the call, last five minutes of the conversation was <clears throat> from an elderly man who's seen the world, who's enjoyed life, made a good money, doing a good business, now looking at transferring his business to the next generation, all that. And he says this, Ben, end of it, everything is meaningless. And he says, don't go about money, 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 da. Live life and have good health. That only matters in the end. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything that we are running this race is meaningless if we do not seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Can I hear a hallelujah? The world will say, hey, what are you doing in life, man? I mean, it's been so many years and you can't even do this, can't even get your own house, can't even do that, this. The world will constantly put pressure. But if we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto us will be added into us. So I want you to read Luke chapter 12, verse 16 to 21. And, 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 and see how beautifully Luke records. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, what did God say? Can we all say that word together? Loud, please. One of the few places in the scriptures where we can see this word. You fool. You fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared. You will, you will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves is not rich towards God. So the reality of life is tomorrow we do not know whether we will be alive. The reality is we, will, we do not know whether we will make it alive back home. That's the reality. So with this assurance that God has given us, let's not jump into any kind of assumptions like the servant who just retained that one bag, but look at life's actuality and ask ourselves, what is my purpose in life? What is the purpose of my education? What is the purpose of my education? Why God educated me? What is the purpose of my, of my marriage? 
why is why are we getting married in this world just to make babies that's not god's will for marriage just to make babies marriage is not about okay i was having one salary now there's another person came in so we have two salaries so we can have greater bank balance more luxuries in life no so we need to ask ourselves in the presence of god god why did you educate me studied so hard spent so much of money what purpose why this occupation the designation the work the business why what is the purpose what is the purpose of of all that resources that god has given in our hands your your resources and your money your 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 things purpose because solomon who's who's been there done that guy he writes meaningless meaningless everything is meaningless 1 corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 to 20 and this was a situation where paul had to remind the church paul had to basically shake them because they were not doing the right things and he writes them the sharp letter and and this line he writes in 1 corinthians 6 19 20 he says do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have raised from god received from god you are not your own you were bought at a price therefore honor god with your bodies so purpose this body the spirit of god is living inside of you my dear brother the spirit of the living god is inside of you my dear sister so we need to honor our bodies so with bodies that we need to honor what about the other things that god has blessed us with our resources our education our employment our marriage our marriages our marriage that god brought us together is because to fulfill a purpose not just to raise some children and then they get, grow up and then in in your second childishness they will take care of you and at one point of time they will have to go on and you will be moved to a home if you don't have any other place that's not the purpose god always builds marriages or brings about marriages to build this church hallelujah because if this church needs to be healthy if god's household needs to be healthy my dear brother my dear sister it starts with your family it starts with your family it starts with your family purpose so this morning i've titled the sermon you and i are called to pursue purpose can we say this together Pur- pursue you and i are called to pursue our purpose we are not just called to live the mundane life work 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 harder get promoted then then you get even more hard work then finally you will be brought back home in an ambulance because you've been working so hard i think it's important that you take a post it on monday when you go to work write this verse meaningless meaningless everything is meaningless on on your on your on your monitor so that you are constantly reminded hey i have much more to do than just this work are you with me church this morning so you and i are called to pursue purpose can we say this together pursue purpose i took this image because have you come across this fish symbol in 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 many places there is a history towards it if you do not know i want to quickly share it this is how the early christian the second century christians they identified one another as christians the guys who are following christ because jesus told the disciples i will make you fishers of men so in their gathering homes they would take something and they will make a fish symbol so that fellow christians will know in the city oh this is a christian's home because there's so much of persecution because there was there were even times where when they found that you are a christian they took you alive burnt you and they hung you on lamp post so that you can give light through the night in the street 
real reality and they identified themselves with these the symbol the fish christian christ followers so you and i we have a purpose that we need to pursue as a christian there are two mandates that that is in our life one is the creation mandate god created joel for a purpose he needs to be in a family he needs to grow in a family he needs to educate himself in a particular way he needs to go for a job purpose that's the creation mandate for joel but joel also has a great commission mandate the moment he gives his life to christ so this morning my objective is to help all of us understand some basic pursuit of purpose can we say this pursuit of purpose don't say pursuit of happiness huh? it's easy to get caught away but you and i are called to pursue purpose and i want to begin with ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 talking about purpose pursuing ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are god's handiwork turn to the person seated next to you and tell them you are god's handiwork i had the opportunity to go to the uh, the art world art world art world art dubai I, i was there pravin and i we went to world art dubai and we were awestruck amazed the way people were painting and in the art they were in serena was there and uh, she displayed her uh, work as well amazing if man can come up with some amazing handy work the word of god says for we are god's handiwork can you tell to the person once again now you t- turn to the other side and tell them you are god's handiwork you are god's handiwork created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared in advance for us to do so the basic pursuit of purpose is you need to understand that there is a set of good works that god has created for us in advance what does he say when you break down this just just this one verse it basically says we are product of god are you getting it have you seen at the back of your iphone designed in california made in china right designed in california made in china so we are basically designed in heaven made in probably kerala tamil nadu maharashtra or other parts of the world so we are we are we are created the product of god we are shaped by god we are created to do a specific task the good works in the days to come people in the households we will all get to learn about this term called life work this life work is the good set of good works that god has created in advance for us to do and this life work is not your work life by the way it is much more than your work life it's a set of all the good works god has created in advance for you to do and we will learn about it we will study about it to understand what are the set of good works that this god this god has called me to do so this morning we are not going to be dwelling on the good works or the life work but this morning we are going to be dwelling on am i even in the pursuit of finding my purpose what is that good work that god has prepared in advance for me to do and you know what is the greatest good work that you and i as christians can do any any answers lead people to to salvation last evening it was such an encouragement for us we we were at uh, at the abu dhabi church we meet in a home and uh, last evening we had to meet another family so we 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 were we were not there for the start so the worship I, i i call them i said you start worship you're coming so 27th floor we step out of the elevator and we could hear loud worship 27th floor worship is like the house is somewhere there but we can hear the worship right outside near the elevator area so we go we finish this we 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 worship and then uh, then we then the host shares this testimony pastor this evening my husband and i we were just practicing some worship songs for this evening and somebody rang the doorbell so we quickly went our house is a small house is a single bedroom house so we quickly went and opened the door nobody was there but there was just this one tiny post it a slip was there hey you guys are doing a good job continue to do it and with a smiley written handwritten note 
we still do not know who the person is so somebody is observing somebody is watching so i'm telling this is the good work one of the good work that god has called us to do and called you to do is to open your home for the church to gather are you with me church so this morning in in order for us to understand okay let me pursue purpose and where do i start because god has called me to do the good works great and the greatest good work is not about just taking care of the poor and the needy but it's about leading people to christ because he is the way the truth and the life so where do i start and i have four b's for us can we say b it's not p it's b b as in ball or b as in ben i have four b's for us this morning to start with i want to talk about bridge you and i are called to be a bridge we spoke about bridge in one of our households in the last last week or the previous week how can we be a bridge talking about bridges how many of you have seen the golden gate bridge in san francisco california at yes at in the pictures or some of you were there it's a it's an engineering marvel by the way it's an engineering marvel and the idea came in the year you know which year the idea was was birthed the idea was birthed in the year 1869 to build a bridge to connect these two places in the year 1869 when you read about the bridge the stats it's amazing the bridge it's, the bridge itself is 2.4 kilometers long and and the steel strands that are used it we can take it and go around the equator three times so much steel is there and the concrete used to build that bridge if you take all the concrete and you want to make a footpath you can make a footpath from kashmir to kanyakumari so much concrete has gone inside and the and the idea was birthed you know when in the year 1869 when when this guy came up with this idea his name is joshua he came up with this idea and people called him a lunatic they said you are crazy why should we even build a bridge here it's impossible to build a bridge because it was taking a long time to go to the other side but 50 years later they devised a plan to start the construction 50 years later so you and i are called to to build bridges and when we tell when we when we when we think about this or when we are making some attempts to be a bridge you will be ridiculed today generations later are blessed because of one man's idea in the year 1869 and he had to overcome a lot of mocking and people called him a lunatic but he still pursued 50 years later there was an engineering team and they built the bridge and today it's a blessing it's a blessing it's a beautiful postcard in many 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 places a nice nice picture it's 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 so beautiful to even sit there and watch that bridge it is a blessing so you and i we need to ask us understand that being a bridge not will be it will not be welcomed by everybody people will not like it that's about the guy who built the bridge but i want to talk about two people in the in the scriptures the first one is john the baptizer how many of you remember john the baptizer his very appearance was not very were not very good that's what the scripture says what does it say is about it's like uh, he was he was wearing camel skin belt beard Uh, not groomed having wild ani and and all that i'm sure when he walks in we will not go say hi to him that's his appearance but what did he do he was a bridge he was telling people hey i can baptize you with water but there's one who's coming whose sandals i'm not worthy of even touching and he will baptize you with the father son and the holy spirit he was a bridge another guy from the scriptures moses moses what what what's with moses he was like in exodus chapter 3 verse 10 when you read about this particular incident god tells moses he picks up moses and asks him to be a bridge so go now what said what does it say so now go i'm sending you to pharaoh to bring my people the israelites out of egypt it's like that idea bridge connecting these two places impossible you are a fool similarly i am sending you to pharaoh 
for what to bring my people and moses is like me you want me to do this job and we know the story what happened later so being a bridge is part of our purpose but it will not be welcomed by many it will not be welcomed by many hallelujah so we need to continue to ask the ask god to fill him fill us with the spirit so that we can continue to build bridges so that people can walk over this bridge so that they can go to the truth the light and the life are you with me church this morning we we do we we go great miles we do great lengths to fulfill something that interests us right we we are we are anything that interests us we we go the extra mile but to do the work of christ which is part of our good works for which god has already created in advance we are not willing to quickly be the bridge so the first b that i want you to take back home is you and i in the in this pursuit of purpose basic is as a christian we need to be the bridge can we say this word bridge the second one is you and i we need to go beyond boundaries let's read this ephesians passage ephesians chapter 2 verse 15 to 18 ephesians chapter 2 verse 15 to 18 what's his purpose paul beautifully explains hey this is why one dubai is there this is why one abu dhabi is here this is why the church of christ is there in this world for what purpose his purpose was to create in himself can we all read this together his purpose was to create in himself a new humanity out of the two thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to god through the cross by which he put to death their hostility he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near for through him we both have access to the father by one spirit he's re- he's referring to through christ the jew gentile divide is broken the wall of hostility is broken that's the purpose of the church bring people from all nations all backgrounds all walks of life come together and 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 be his his family for which you and i we need to go beyond our boundaries are you with me church this morning we need to go beyond our boundaries God is in the process of bringing all of mankind and he calls them as my family. He is calling all of the mankind as his family. But when it comes to us, we are so picky and choosy about who we want to speak and be in touch with. Oh, they are not our types of people. Oh, that guy, he wears a black belt and a brown shoe. Oh, that's not the way to dress. I don't want to talk to him. or oh, she oh every day is a bad hair day for her he's not my kind of a person or oh, this guy oh when he removes his shoes and comes into our house the whole house is now it's got a new aroma and i don't i don't want to hang out with this guy are you are you getting it we build walls this is my kind he talks the same language but the other person he is he still stuck in the 60s somebody gifted me a, a a fridge magnet pastor ben this is just for you and and you know what it read stuck in the 70s cuz that's how i used to be with the, with the, with a set of people that we were back in india they called me you are you are the you are 40 plus guy you are you are still stuck in the 70s but we are called to go beyond boundaries can we say this word boundaries because what did jesus do when you look at the incident that happened to the samaritan woman by the well he was doing something significant because the jews and the samaritans always had a tiff john chapter 4 verse 9 John records this and and look at the look at the the response of the Samaritan woman the Samaritan woman said to him what was the Samaritan woman's response you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman 
how can you ask me for a drink how can you ask me for a drink but jesus broke those boundaries zacchaeus is unable to see jesus so he climbs on the sycamore tree to see jesus and jesus immediately sees him hey zacchaeus i want to hang out with you tonight so then he says come let's go to time out market and jesus is there at the time out market and the religious guys look at jesus he's sitting in the time out market is he having a heineken or a red bull the religious guys but jesus is clearly purpose driven he wants to make sure the truth is spoken to everybody hallelujah so you and i are called to 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 break boundaries so so we need to ask ourselves are we are we even have we started this some of us are 30 years old 40 years old 50 years old 60 years old but we are stuck in our inside our four walls in the process of being holy and holy and holier every single year we only build a wall that is getting stronger and stronger and all we do is we interact with people who are of the same faith but you and i are called to pursue a purpose can we say this once again pursue purpose for which first we need to be the bridge second we need to go beyond boundaries second we need to go beyond boundaries the third element of this morning's message is the third element is you and i are called to belong to one another can we say this together belong to one another you and i are called to develop a sense of belonging it's not natural my friend it's not natural my brother my sister to to develop a sense of belonging with somebody who you've been meeting for the last two weeks it's not natural and it has to be intentional it has to be intentional why i say this because that's what the scripture says ephesians chapter 2 verses 19 to 22 and i want let's let's just break uh, the monotony can we all stand up for this this one particular point can we all stand up can we all stand up to our feet and let's let's read this together ephesians 2:19 to 22 consequently can we all read it together in a loud voice consequently you are no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with god's people and also members of his house so let's pause it for a moment look at the ones who are standing next to you behind you just give them a look just look around just look around just look around and see they are no longer foreigners they are no longer strangers but they are who members of our household they are your family let's be seated thank you we are all one family we are no longer strangers we are no longer foreigners but we are all one family members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone in him whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the lord and in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which god lives by his spirit so he says that we are all members of one household we are a family but this family cannot live however the family feels like living that's my next point when we are talking about belonging <coughs> let's read ephesians chapter 3 7 to 9 the following verses he says i became a servant who's writing this paul he says i became a servant of this gospel by the gift of god's grace given me through the working of his power although i am less than the least of all the lord's people this grace was given me for what what is the grace to preach to the gentiles thank you so much to preach to the gentiles the boundless riches of christ and make plain to everyone what what was the word can we say this together make plain to everyone the administration you might think what what the word administration is it found in the scriptures absolutely yes because we are so used to this word in our workplaces call the admin that's not getting fixed call the admin who's the admin of your social media handle check with the admin we are so used to but the scripture talks about administration he says my job is to preach to the gentiles and also to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in god who created all things so paul talks about administration the word here the root word is 
is from Greek. It says oikonomos. Oikos and nomos, which means house and order. So he says, my job is to preach to the Gentiles and to bring in a house order inside the household of God because we are no longer foreigners and strangers, but we are members of his household and there needs to be a house order. And then we read in the book of Ephesians how husbands should function, how wives should function, how parents should treat their children, how children should function, how masters should teach the slaves. House order. So we have to truly belong to one another, which means we need to be intentional about it and we need to learn about it. How should I live in this family of God according to the family order? Are you with me, church? Third is what? We need to belong. So I'm, my, my, my call to everybody today is come be part of a community. If you are not yet part of a community, let's learn together how to function as a family of God. You reading the Bible, praying, good, do it. We need to have those personal Bible reading disciplines and prayer disciplines. But we need to spend some time together as a family of God to understand what is this administration. How should I really set my house in order so that God's house will be in order? I'm sure the ones who are in the households or in the life groups, they will understand what I'm talking about. The ones who are not, basically you are out of order. Just kidding, but try. Try and make an attempt. Because Paul is very clear. He says this mystery was hidden in the ages past. They never knew how to be in order. They, they, their marriage was haywire. Their life was precarious. Their drinking habits was crazy. They were out of order and this mystery was hidden in the ages past. And my job now, Paul says, is to preach to the Gentiles, bring them into one household of God and teach them the house order, administration. That's exactly what we are learning and, 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 and getting to learn in our households, in our small groups. Are you with me, church? Fourth and the final B for all of us to take back home this this morning is, we are called to be a blessing. First one was the bridge. Second one was boundaries. Third is about belonging to one another. Fourth is, you and I are called to be a blessing. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, and Luke beautifully records, this is what the Lord said, remembering the words of the Lord. Can we read this together? In other words, it is a blessing to be a blessing. It is a blessing to be a blessing. So we need, to, we need to stop decreasing in this attitude of I am being serviced. We should decrease in that area. God's household is not a place where I am serviced. But God's household, God's family is a place where I am servicing. I am serving. Being a blessing. When we say give, we immediately think about money. But God is, is asking our whole life itself to serve him, not just money. Not just money. Talking about money, we can, we can, we can talk about it for a whole, whole uh, sermon and, and we can keep it for another day. But he's saying we are called to be a blessing. I want to talk about this true story, this true incident. 2009, <clears throat> I said no to my corporate job. And joined to serve the church. And since, since 2009, we never had a child. We never had Abby. <clears throat> but we've been going through the, the usual struggles. All the, all the challenges to have a child. But we never had one. So 2009, we decided as a family, Ben will quit. Pravina will continue to work. And I started serving in the church. 2010, Pravina was conceived. Why I'm saying this is, I'm not saying you want to you have a child join the church. No, <laughs> not, That's not my idea. When you, when you put your life to be a blessing, God will honor that. Hallelujah. I have never come across somebody who said, Pastor, I've given to the Lord my money. I've given, I've given all my resources, my knowledge, my, my life. I've served the Lord. And today my children are begging bread. 
I've never come across a person that way. But I've come across people where they have never given, they have none, done met, nothing, but the next generation was, it's come back to zero. It's true, guys. Try, test the Lord in this matter. You want to be blessed, think about your giving, giving your life to the Lord, giving your resources to the Lord, giving your, your time to the Lord, your talent, your, your everything to the Lord. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. So in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, then after joining church and, and after many years, now we are, we are seeing a, a, a group of people coming from a particular area in Chennai. I'm talking about a Chennai story. The name of the place is called Velacheri. So there are a group of people who are coming from that particular locality and they're all traveling an, an extra mile to go be part of a household. So now there's a clear indicator that there is a need for us to start a household because there's so many people are coming from there. So I asked a, a family, can I, can, can we, can we, let's say Tony and Soumya, can I, so I'm asking to Tony, Tony, can we, can we start a household in your, in your house because you're living in that area? So Tony says, Pastor, give me one month time. We do not have enough furniture. Let me furnish my house in a month's time and then we can go about it. Within, within a month's time, he comes back and saying, Pastor, I think 10 to 12 people can be easily seated. We can go ahead. So we start the household. We start the household. And, and this family, this couple, is trying to have a child for many years, close to seven, eight years. Three weeks after starting the household in their home, he calls me and says, my wife is conceived. Just three weeks. Be a blessing because it is a blessing to give. He, he, they altered their lifestyle so that their home, their family can be a blessing to the local church. Their home and their family and their life to, will be a blessing to God himself. Because their home is now functioning as a mission center where the word of God can be taught. The administration can be spoken about so that the house will be in order. And God releases a blessing over their lives. So it is very true. It is very real. You give, it will be given back to you. Not just money. Test them in any area. So four things that we need to, we need to take back home this morning. In, in our pursuit of purpose, we are not called to just run this mundane life, work and work and work and work and not doing anything else towards fulfilling the purpose because God has created in advance a set of good works that he wants us to be doing. So we need to pursue that. And the first and the greatest good work that we can do is tell people the good news of gospel of Christ. Be a bridge Go beyond your boundaries. Be a blessing to people. 